on Alaska, a place of rich beauty, deep cultural traditions, and a peacefulness often hidden in the remote and rugged terrain. But in June of 1942, the sounds of crashing waves and rushing winds were replaced by new sounds, the sounds of war. After rampaging across the Pacific for six months, the Japanese were poised for the killing blow. Their plan was to attack Midway Island in the Central Pacific while simultaneously striking Alaska. The Japanese task force, containing the Japanese carriers Junyo and Ryujo, plowed through rough weather due northeast. Destination, Aleutian Islands. Members of the American military were not the only ones facing the brunt of the attack. The Aleut residents of Unalaska Village also felt the impact. In an interview 35 years ago, Philemon Tudiakov recalls his experience. From above the bomb shelters we should have been in, I watched the Japanese bombers high in the air crossing the skies, and also the Zeros as they strafed the town of Unalaska. I could hear the machine guns firing at the Zeros, the anti-aircraft guns firing at the bombers, and we knew that the hospital at the end of Unalaska had been hit. Life in war is determined by inches and seconds. One survivor shares his story. Ralph Morrison was aboard a PBY taking off from Dutch Harbor when the Japanese planes attacked. We were taking off the water as the Japanese fighters hit us. Luckily, the we weren't off the water, they knocked out one engine in the aircraft and uh, we made a circle in the bay and made the beach. But uh, this was still quite dark and I was unaware that this was happening. I was in the after station of the airplane as a passenger since I was misrouted. I was supposed to go to Coal Bay and uh, so I was back there with a 50 caliber machine gun on either side of me when they started strafing the airplane and I wasn't even aware that we were being attacked. I thought there was a short in the airplane. And to uh, clinch my theory, a tracer landed about a foot in front of my face and I thought that was what they called St. Elmo's fire. So I wasn't aware that we were being attacked until one of the victims uh, came back bleeding quite extensively and jumped overboard. Uh, at this time, I. The PPC came back, the patrol plane commander came back and said, abandon ship. 75 years later, many of the voices of this attack have fallen silent. Time has taken a toll on the soldiers, sailors, pilots, and the civilians who all played a role or bore witness to the attack. The images of their youth, the confidence and fear, are now for many only reminders of a war much of the world has forgotten. Today, the grainy black and white photos and faded film clips are replaced by the vibrant colors of Unalaska. On this 75th anniversary of the attack, we remember all of the sacrifices and honor those by vowing to never forget all who fought or suffered in the Forgotten War.